Yo, what's up guys? So today I'm going to be walking you guys into my new series called Into the Mind of Pack. And the idea is basically I wanted to walk you through some of the high level gameplay and like my thought process as I play um, basically Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Like what's going through my head? What am I trying to play around? What are the reasons I'm making? How am I playing around certain cards? And I think this will offer a lot of insight into you guys who are trying to become a lot more competitive or try to understand basically like how my brain works in regards to like, you know, the to like with regards to like Yu-Gi-Oh and how I interpret like game states. Um, basically think of it as like essentially like free coaching. Um, and so this first episode is basically going to be a pilot one. It's going to be quite long. So I want you guys to like strap in, enjoy it, uh, maybe listen to it as a podcast or something like that. Um, and it's going to be basically with me playing an Alistair um, invoked DPE deck versus uh, PKs. I think two main meta decks in the format. I would say both these decks are in the top five right now of the current meta game. And basically how I walk through like some of the lines and, and you know, what are my thought processes and all that good stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you uh, like it, let me know in the comment section below ways to improve it, make it a lot better. But anyways, guys, um, I'll see you guys there. All right, yeah, so this is uh, game one, or this is game two. I'm playing against the PK player. And, you know, this is my starting hand, starting five. Uh, not amazing hand. Uh, Tisbu is, like, not too shabby into the PK matchup, but there are ways for them to play around. If they open, like, you know, danger, if they open dangers plus, like, uh, a psychic wheeler or anything like that, they can make break sword to force it. Um... Uh, there's also like if they open two level threes and like a psychic tracker and let's say like a PK monster, they can make Tribony, which is a fiend. Um, so there's like s definitely stuff that they can do. But anyway, this is my starting hand. I think there's not much to think about. Would be to like um, would be like for example like Nadir Servant. Like I just activate Nadir, right? There's not really anything else like I do here. Like I have to activate Nadir. So there's obviously like there's stuff like this where it's like really obvious. Like you look at your hand. And you kind of just have to do it. There's an there's also the other argument where you're like, okay, what if I don't activate the deer? I s because my opponent might have like you know an ash blossom. If you're if you think your opponent has like multiple ash blossoms or something, and you want to wait until maybe you draw like meltdown to bait the ash, or like you want to maybe wait until you draw Alistair because if you draw Alistair, you can get ash on Alistair and still make Maximus, um, or something like that. Like there's like other stuff like that too, right? But I think like this is one of those games where I'm like, I want to just resolve Nadir and just gain the advantage off that card. Um, so I think that's what I do. I just I know Nadir, Ab Cologne, get Ecclesia, <clears throat> um, and then you trigger Ab Cologne, uh, you add Schism, and then you just dump the Schism because Maximus is just gonna add the Schism back anyways uh, when you send Construct and you send to Tinclad. So you go normal Ecclesia first to maybe bait like a Valor, because this is very easily where the Valor would come down. Um, or like an Impermanence. Uh, it didn't, which is a pretty good telltale sign that they don't have it. And then use the Search Punishment, because the reason being that Titanic Cloud will get you access to the Fluted Lee, um, and then Construct as you back Schism, so you're in like a fine spot here. Um, so you do that. You send Construct to Tinnaclad. Construct into Tinnaclad also means that Schism is live to make Winda. Um, he sends his two. Dagda and uh, Nightmare. It's fine. You set three. So there's an argument where like, okay, what if you play around Lightning Storm? But this was one of those hands where like, if you commit one to the back, like if you commit one to the back row and they Lightning Storm you, you lose anyways. If you set, so... So, like, the idea was you just have to set everything and just pray they didn't have it. Because, like, if you try to play around evenly and you only set one, there's suddenly a... There's, like, that's actually, like, more reasonable where, like, oh, you keep the Floodgate and you probably hope to survive. But I think we were playing around Lightning Storm because it doesn't make sense for a PK deck to be playing evenly match when Lancia kills their deck, right? Like, it doesn't make sense. So, like, it's not very, like... Like, it's not very, like reasonable for your opponent to have an evenly match in their pk deck so you're like okay we're just gonna play uh like theoretically you would play around lightning storm but it, it, like these type of hands if you get lightning storm you're probably losing anyways so might as well set everything um and that's exactly what happens like I, that's why i'm like oh do i not set droplets because what if i get lightning storm and i like somehow survive i can then drop with my opponent yeah that's copium i'm like we're setting everything 
And then we go to Tinnaclad, add Flutely, and we just pass. So this is where you're going to see, like, I think, like, a lot of people would go trigger figure, tr trigger finger on, like, Schism. But you're going to see, like, some of the stuff here. Um, you're going to see some stuff here that shows, like, the, the value of, like, being patient. So he goes special junk forward. Um, and he couldn't eat till he's standby phase, which would be a really good play because it plays around the quote-unquote schism. Um, but, but he, he just starts off with junk four because it's a summon that doesn't start a chain. So it just summons itself right away, which I can't respond to schism with junk forward. So I'm like, okay, junk four is fine. He normal summon ancient cloak and, and then, um, so this gets almost something here. So we have a couple options. We can go, we can go TC boo. And he has to send, if he, if we go TC Boo, he can send Cloak and then just banish the Cloak, add Fog Blade. Um, TC Boo also prevents him from making Break Sword. Um, so that's not bad as well. Um, and then the next thing you have to think about is, okay, what if we don't flip TC Boo? Because there's an issue with, if we flip TC Boo, right? If we flip TC Boo, what gets turned off? Oh, wait, this yeah, it doesn't have fall, but it adds, like, what, boots and, like, the Shade Brigadine? Sorry, uh, misspoke. But, okay, the issue is, if you activate TC Boo, there's one huge issue. You can't activate Schism. When does the Spellcaster? So, so, at this point, you're like, okay, if I flip TC Boo, he sends one of the names, um, and he should probably just banish Cloak, adds another card, probably just Vibe, and pass, but the issue is... My Schism's turned off, and my Fool is turned off. So I don't want to flip TC Boo unless I really, really need to. Right? So, the next thought process would be like, okay, what can he do with two level threes, right? The the two, the, there's like a couple answers. First, he either makes Break Sword, which is like a pretty good choice. Um, Break Sword can force like one of the back row. But then if he, if he makes Break Sword, and we can... If we if he makes break sword and I think he has droplets, which I thought he had. I thought this when this guy was playing like this, I'm like, yo, this dude has droplets. 100 percent This dude has to have droplets. He's playing, he's um he's playing pretty comfortably. Like this guy like seems like he's like vibing right now. So I'm like, okay, this guy has, might have droplets. So the way you you don't really play around droplets, but you want to maximize the value out of your schism. And what I mean by that is that like Schism has effect where when you summon whatever monster you summon, you can send a monster your opponent controls with the same attribute as the monster you fusion summon. So in my head, I'm like, okay, if, the, if he has droplets, what I want to do is I want to let him commit to the break sword, send the break sword to the graveyard with Schism, which doesn't trigger, um, which doesn't trigger break sword, and then he has four cards. If one of them is droplets, he has to droplets a card to target the window, and if he does that. Then I have Tisibu to answer the other two cards in his hand. Um, and so I was like, okay, I'm feeling pretty good. And if worst case comes to worst, I punishment him. So I basically make it so that his droplets isn't as good um, as, like, it, it's not going to be as good. So, okay, then the other thing you think about, okay, what if he doesn't make breaks? Or what if he, what if he used both of them into Cherubity? Same thing happens. You just schism, send it to the graveyard. Because I'm trying to, like, you know, at this point, like... Like, you have to think about what are all the things that he can do with two level threes. Like, literally everything. You have to think about, okay, does he make Break Sword? Does he make Fortune Tune? Um, like, like you know, what what are, like, pretty much the options? Um, but, anyways, he's, he does this, and I'm like, okay, we're just going to let it chill. I'm not going to activate TC Boo. It turns off my Schism. It doesn't make sense. I'm not going to have a Schism because if I Schism, send Cloak. Um, if I set and send cloak, theoretically, window would stop his turn. But if, I'm assuming he has some sort of like dark ruler or like droplets. In which case, he would just dark ruler the uh, the window, and it's actually not going to be as easy. And I don't get a really good value out of schism. So um, now I, I just vibe. I'm just chilling. That's why I said think. I'm like whatever. Sure, continue. Right. I think of all the possible scenarios. And I'm like every scenario. Every scenario I think of, it just benefits me to just hold schism. Like, just being patient just is, like, vibing. Like, it's just so good. Um, so, he overlays into Levier, which is a pretty good play. Because Levier is a wind monster which cannot be sent to the graveyard off schism. Right? It can't be schismed. 
Um, it's a car that can for it can that can uh, potentially Zeus. Um, and so like, how long do you think about these plays? So this was an Iron Man, so you, we actually had a lot of time to think because like, there's usually no time limit. You just have to play at a reasonable pace. But obviously, like these plays, like you know, they're like testing. They're like testing time. So what I mean by this is like in these type of scenarios, you try to play at a normal pace and you look at the replays after. That's what Nesh does really well at. Like after we play like an Iron Man or something, he would post the replays and we would go over them. Like we would go over them. And like look at the replay, see what we could do that would be really good technically. Like does it make sense to flip schism early or why do we do this, this, and this? But the thing is the more you do all of this stuff, the more you do all of this stuff, the more these plays come to you really fast naturally in person um and that's how you kind of like i feel like go from like being a db warrior as people like meme to like someone who like you know you take like the value of db because i don't i think db is actually very valuable like such a valuable tool to like get good like like i think like one of the reasons one of the ways i got like good um or got like a lot better when i first started playing was i played in a lot of um luxury money matches like i played bro i just like if you guys know, like, how I started was, I, w I think I joined Luxury Gaming's Facebook page, and I just kept playing money matches. I just got, like, wax, bro. I just got wax, but I kept playing, like, good players. So I would I would get wax OD. I would get wax OD by really insane players, but I would watch my replay and see what these really good players were doing with their deck, and I just learned their deck. And it was, like, the it was probably, the be like, the best investment ever, like, getting wax. By people, because I just like would ask people to play like on um, like the luxury frames, and this was like, bro, you understand? I was like two months in. I think Hani waxed me for like a hundred before he he even knew who I was. And but I learned so much, bro. Like I think he was playing Orcus when I played him, and like, yo, I I was seeing like these Orcus plays that I never seen before. Like it was crazy. I was like, yo, this is like wild. Like I didn't even know Orcus could do this stuff, you know? Um, so. Anyways, besides the point, like, DB is a really good tool. But anyways, um, the idea is that you you practice this and you think about your plays. And then hopefully, like, when they, you play in person or whatever, these plays come naturally and much faster to you, right? I think that's the biggest thing about playing in person versus playing DB. You don't have a, you don't have a minute per play. It's like, it's like maybe like 30 to 40 seconds or something like that. Anyways, we keep going. So this guy makes Levy here. The, I have to kind of think here, right? Do I use Punishment? Now, here's the other predicament, right? If you Punishment the Levy here, do you guys see what the issue is? You can't activate Schism. So you, you're locked out of Schism. So it's not just as easy as, oh, he makes Levier, Omega Law. I'm just going to Punishment Levier, GG no re, right? It's not as easy as that. Um, so so um, I had to kind of think a little bit more about that. Because if I Punishment Cloak, my only other form of interaction is TC Booth drop his fluidly, which is not even that bad. It's like not even terrible. Um, but Punishment also kills my top decks. It kills like... Alistair, Meltdown, Fusion Destiny, right? Kills like probably like three melt, three Fusion Destiny. Uh, I have seven Meltdowns. That's ten. That's uh, seven Meltdowns or seven Alistairs. That's ten cards. It kills so many cards that I can top deck as well. So I don't want to use Punishment. That's just my last resort, pretty much, is the way I looked at it, right? Because like I, I want to get like I like I'm not I'm not trying to like you know uh, Punishment him. He passes back to me. I can't kill him. This guy rips Lightning Storm, blows out my back where I just lose. Why don't you use Schism here and force him to drop the Dark Lord? Because I don't get value out of my Schism. And this is what I was kind of trying to get at, at being patient. Um, I don't want to use Schism here because... Um, I don't want to use Schism here. Because if I do, I don't get value out of it if it gets Dark Ruler. So I want to use Schism to and use its effect to send a Dark Monster he controls. So we'll see what happens. I let him go to battle. I think in main one. Because I'm like... Do I go chain link one schism or do I go like schism and then go punishment pop this? That's what I thought about. I'm like, ah, that play seems so cheeks. I'm not going to do that because I still lose to the dark ruler that I was talking about, right? I'm playing around dark ruler. I'm playing around droplets right now. So the, um, the thing is I get more value if I use schism to send a dark monster and then he has to use dark ruler. Like that's double value. If I just trade a Schism into a Dark Ruler, that's not good value for me. That's a one-for-one. One. But if I Schism send a XYZ or a Dark Monster to the Graveyard, and he uses Dark Ruler, that's a two-for-one. One. That's a three-for-one. One. He has to use three cards. That's a three-for-one. One. I'm, I'm not trying to go one-for-one one when he has six cards to my... You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to go one-for-three. 
And that's like, that's value. So I, I, anyways, I let him go to battle phase. And then here's where I was so sure this guy has droplets. Look what he, look who he attacks into. He attacks Ecclesia, right? In my head, I'm like, bro, if this guy doesn't have droplets, he just goes levy year, attack Maximus. It just makes the most sense. He just levy years Maximus. And I was so sure he was going to do that. I'm like, this guy is probably going to levy your attack Maximus. Then he attacks Ecclesia. And then in my head, I'm like, okay, this dude attacked Ecclesia. Ecclesia obviously won't die. Um, because it cannot be destroyed by battle with monsters summoned from the extra deck. But if I droplets him and reduce his monster to 900, he can reverse droplets me into the Ecclesia. And then main phase two attempt to Zeus. But then I, then I have to like droplet and I have to use punishment. But there's a way in which I only use one card to basically play around the droplets. And so here's what I did. I let it go to damage step. And I asked, I told him he has priority. So this is very important. I asked him, yeah, I told him he had priority. I just wanted to see if he would just flip something. I told him he has priority. I'm like, yo, you have anything you want to use? Quick effects and damage step. He said, sure. He, I said, sure. And he's like, use droplets. Now, I think like people might try to get greedy. A lot of people get greedy here. They go droplets send like, let's say they send like maybe Dasher or whatever. It can be any card. Let's assume it's any card right now. And they make this 900 attack, and an Ecclesia destroys Levier. That's what a lot of people would do. But what I did was, I'm like, okay, if I read the Droplets, and I've been playing around Droplets since his turn started, what play here makes the most sense that plays around his Droplets on my Droplets? So what did I do? I went Damage Step, Send Ecclesia, the monster he attacked. Now, why is this important? Well... It's important because it plays around his droplets because 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 we enter damage step, he doesn't get a redeclare. That's the first that's the first important thing. He doesn't get a redeclare. A monster needs to um, enter like basically damage calc and I think perform damage calc in order to meet its condition for Zeus. An X Y Z monster needs to like perform damage calc in order to meet its condition for Zeus. Um, and and so I'm like okay. I'm, I don't think this guy knows this. I was so confident. I'm like, this dude doesn't know this. I had copy pasta ready, ready to explain to him because I know he's going to go main phase 2 attempt to summon Zeus. I already knew it. But I knew this was the best play to play around his own droplets as well. And like, it may, like this stuff doesn't seem like that crazy, obviously, that now that I'm explaining it to you. But in the heat of the moment, when you're playing in person, these type of plays aren't like supernatural. It doesn't, it's not the first thing people think of. It's kind of like what I'm trying to get at. But it's the type of play that you know if you're if you're playing around certain cards like you're and like you know you might, might like i guess the important thing to take away from this was like if you're playing around certain cards and you've been playing around it the you know since the beginning why would you stop playing around that card why would you get greedy and drop it another card you know what i'm saying because like i said i a lot of people get really greedy here they drop it something make this 900 attack and you know it makes his opponent lose 600 they lose a monster a lot of people get super greedy here but i'm like yo i'm, I'm literally playing around i'm playing around this um, so he's like, okay. And I'm like, there's no replay. Even ask. I'm like, here's no replay. No replay at all. It reached damage step. And then he attempts to summon Zeus. Called it. Literally called it, bro. Literally called it. Yeah, he's got got a ruling that. I'm just like, call Nash, bro. I, I didn't even want to explain it. Because the thing is, I'm his opponent, so he's not going to bother asking it to me. But Nash is the judge. So he's... I'm just gonna explain to this dude pretty much that like yeah that's basically correct. Um, so the dude takes it back, but now like if you like look at like Marcelo Barber, if you look at everything so far, bro, look at this. You guys think I changed schism to Tully? You guys think I changed schism to Tully? This is a perfect schism spot, right? Why no replay? Because um, if a monster has reached if it, if it reaches the damage step and there's a change in like monsters um, on either player's side, uh, you wouldn't be able to, like, there's just like, you wouldn't, like, you've already reached the damage step. Like, it just doesn't occur. Like, I don't know. Just like, that's just how the game works. I, I don't know how to explain, like, why there isn't, like, the, like, why. It's just, that's just how the game works. You, you, there's just no replay that occurs during the damage step. 
but like you kind of abuse that understanding, right? So he doesn't get a replay, so he can't attack into the maximus, so he can't attempt to make Zeus. And then for a monster to have considered battle, it has to like perform the damage calc. Because there, are, I think there are certain cards that sends monsters away during the damage calc. So like you can still enter damage calc. You can still enter damage calc and still not meet the condition for Zeus. I just don't know which cards does that. Maybe Endman knows. But there's like there's like a there's like certain cards that does it. So it's not as simple as just oh you enter damage calc and a monster is considered battled. I think that's why I said I think you have to perform the damage calc actually. Um, but anyways, I don't chain Telly here. Why? Because like I said, I want value out of my schism. And Telly doesn't like think about what he does here. If he goes emergency teleport and he summons a monster, what does he do that threatens me? Like there's absolutely nothing he does that threatens me when he activates the e Telly. So I don't need to use Schism. Like, nothing threatens me. He activates e Telly, he has two monsters. What does he do with a Levier and a Psychic Wheeler? Like, because, but the thing, that's what I was thinking of in my head. I literally kept thinking, I'm like, okay, this dude just activated Teleport. Why didn't he activate it in Battle Phase and then use Turn Player Priority or use, like, use his Priority in main at the start of Main Phase 2 to make a Link Play? The guy didn't even do that. So I'm like, this guy just hard activate Telly in Main Phase 2. That's when I knew this guy definitely has Droplets. Definitely has droplets, bro. I'm like, this guy just raw dogged his e Telly in main phase 2 instead of doing it in battle phase and using his priority in main phase 2 to perform some sort of link play. Or, like, perform, like, his first action in main phase 2 and use that, and use that, and, like, start of M2. He didn't even do that. So, I'm like, yo, this dude definitely has it. That's why I definitely didn't chain schism at this point. And you have to understand, bro, I, in my head at this point, I'm like, yo, I felt, I felt like I was playing insane. Because I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, I'm playing insane right now. There's no way. This guy has it and he's sick. He's already used three cards. There, he already used three cards, bro, and his droplets. And and it, I, in my head, I'm like, this guy he used three cards. He has droplets, two unknowns. So sure, a thousand percent, bro. I was so confident. I'm like, I'm vibing. I'm like, this dude used three cards. Hasn't barely forced out anything. Barely forced out anything, bro. Vibing. What is it? Psychic ruler? Yeah, doesn't do anything. What does he make here? It's like sec. Whoops. Makes anaconda. I'm like, he did it. He did it. Now I get my value. Now I get schism value. Activate schism. Make my window. Send his uh, anaconda to the graveyard. Value town. Value town. E even if the dude has droplets in my head, I'm like, bro, he has to droplet. Send his anaconda for cost. He has two cards in hand, bro. What is this dude doing with two cards in his hand to my TC Boo Flutely? Now dark like now he goes cloak. What does he add here? I think he adds boots. Boots with the fur. I think he has boots with the fur. Yeah. Did you read him as having cosmic at all? No, I didn't. I didn't see him having cosmic at all. Um, Cause if he had, like, I think there wasn't, I think he could have had cosmic, but there's no way to play around cosmic. Like, so I'm just not even going to try to like, you know what I'm saying? I activated schism on the summon of Anaconda and thank God Anaconda it's not a trigger, bro. Thank God it's an ignition effect. So even if he, if I go schism, even if I go schism, and I, even if I go schism and he cosmics it, I still have flu to leave for the anaconda. So I was still feeling pretty good, like not too shabby, you know. So I was like, okay, the dude could have, like, like I didn't think about cosmic at the time to be honest, but I'm like, even if he did, I was still in a very good spot. Um, and then bro, look what he did, he just passes, just passes, but the important part about the whole thing was, I didn't use punishment. Bro, I have literally a million top decks, bro. A million, I have seven melt, seven Alistars. Seven Alistars. I have seven Alley of the Star. I have, I have, um, three Fusion Destinies. I have even another Nadir isn't even that bad. Bro, I have literally insane amount of top decks because... I like hold my cards. I just hold my cards. So, please reward me. I open small world. So, okay. I ran through the numbers, bro. I ran through the numbers. We thought of every single way we can search Alley the Star with small world, but I didn't play a, I I sided out one of the bridges cuz I'm Pepega. So Small World is Alley the Star, but there's quite an issue with it. There's a big issue with it. I didn't have I, I don't have Valor in my deck. <laughs>
So, I I don't even think no Valor wasn't the bridge. There was a what was the bridge? There was a bridge, but there was a there was a bridge, and I sided it out. Was it was it Droll? Oh, I think it was Droll. No, it was Droll. It was Droll because it was Small World, reveal Fleur, banish Droll, search Alistar. But yeah, and Gamma as well. But of course, I'm Pepega. I'm Pepega, bro. And I sided it out. But to be fair, there's no fucking way I keep in Droll against PK, bro. There's no freaking way I keep I keep drawing against PK. So I'm like, I, I, in my head, I was biting myself, bro. I'm like, because the thing is, right? Like, it's also like your job. Like, the thing is, Small World only works. If you like, like if you memorize your deck, like you just have to, right? Like if you activate Small World, bro, guys, there's no, there's no coming back. Like if you have to resolve that, or you're getting like, you're getting a P, P warning, bro, P minor. And I think if you get a second one for illegal activations, you get a game loss. At a YCS, I think it's two like illegal activations is a game loss, and they they upgrade that penalty. So like, like the thing with Small, that's a, bro, guys, my biggest thing for you if you play Small World, yo, please. Look at your graveyard, look at your extra deck, I mean your banish, look at everything and make sure you can resolve it and resolve it the way you want. You do not want to be, you don't want to be get caught calling, getting judge called on you. Trust me. It's like you lose, like you waste hella time, You like it's just OD. Memorize your deck, know every card in your deck and know every card you side in and out. Of course, I did. I thought about it, bro. And the thing is, guys, you can't just, you can't just, you know, pick up your deck and look through all the bridges, all right? It just doesn't work that way, all right, guys? That's called cheating. <laughs> you can't just pick up your deck and be like, wait, hold up, hold up. Before I activate Small World, let me look through my deck, all right? This is not how that works. So so you just have to know. Like, You just have to know like what's the contents of your deck, and you have to know the bridges, or you're going to look ridiculous when you activate this, yo. Um, anyways, you'll see. I think, I bro, I take a hot minute, a hot minute, because yo, I'm like running through all the, the scenarios in my head. I'm like, Yo, is there a world that I can go small world dasher, search something? Like, what if I small world Ecclesia? Every scenario in my head, I'm like, frick. I'm sicko mode, bro. I'm sicko mode. And then I thought about the other thing. I'm like, okay, how the what if I try to OTK this this guy? I can special flirt and normal summon dasher over Ecclesia. Um, so that's 3,000, 2,000, 21. I'm short 900 damage. 900 damage. So I'm like, okay, that line doesn't work up. Heads up. I appreciate the deep dive. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, that doesn't work. I can't just, um, I can't just try to normal dasher and flutterly. Uh, if I had another special summon, like, um, like Ecclesia, maybe it's possible because like dasher has effect to tribute a monster, but here's another issue. Guys, here's another issue. I don't play construct or a second window. If I played it, I won. Because what you can do is you can go special flur, tribute over window, activate schism, summon another window or another construct, activate dasher, dasher tribute the window, go to 831, and that's 8100, that's game. But there's a freaking issue, boys. I only play one window, one construct, one app clone. That's my that's my um, El Shadal package for the Maximus line. So, so, so I was like, bro, I literally, like, I'm sick. You gotta understand, bro. I misplay this this is where like you guys see this. The monster summoner schism cannot attack directly. Yeah, yeah, no, but um yeah, I think whoever said that doesn't mean to like schism attack for game. I think they meant to use schism and then dash or tribute the monster. Yo, don't say that. People play around it. Wait, play around what? Dash or tribute the monster to gain a thousand? Bro, if you don't read if yo, you guys uh, do you guys not read your bricks? Do you guys not read driver? Oh, the second window. Oh, <laughs> yo, I didn't even know that, Nash. No, I don't play it. I literally told them I didn't play it. But it was kind of like, th this is like where testing is so like, this is the beauty of testing though. Like you literally see the second window come up here, but we, we never played it. Uh, you see like, it's this is why like, it's so nice. Like I, I, I enjoy like these type of games because you learn so much, bro. Like in, in like what the span of third, like 29 minutes, I, we went through damage step stuff, play around certain cards. Uh, we have like, stop it, stop, cancel the VOD. Okay, sure. <laughs> but anyways, bro, I read my bricks. I don't know if you guys read your bricks. I read my bricks. Um, 
anyways. <sighs> anyways, um, uh, I'm sick. I went through all the scenarios in my head. I can't kill this dude. I went through all the scenarios. I can't kill this guy. So what do I do? Um, I just went Maximus effect. I think I have to remember. I don't even know what I did. I was sick of mode, bro. I like, bro. Look, he's like, <laughs> the dude literally said, "Uh, you still there? You still there? Or you still there?" <laughs> like, bro. <laughs> five minutes, bro. Five minutes. I took five minutes, bro. From 29 minutes from the turn I drew Small World to 3509, bro. I took five minutes, bro. <laughs> I had to, yo, I literally could have been like, yo, sorry, boys, I had to go take a leak. Literally, but, I mean, obviously, this is like testing, right? The whole purpose of this is testing. This is testing, boys. So, I want to make the right play. And, like, so, this is why you, um, like, this is the whole point of, like, this is what I've been trying to advocate. You have to go through these motions so that when an IRL person comes... You know, when you play either even remote duels, even in-person play, when you don't play on DB, when you don't play on DB, like you have to, um, what do you call it? What's the word? Like you go through these motions. So you figure these things out like, like that, like, like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like right away, like you figure out right away. You see these lines like, like really fast. And that's why like playing in person and playing like. Um, like playing in person is so much harder than playing DB so much harder because there's a lot of external factors DB is strictly like technical like it's literally strictly technical like it's like bro you have like infinite time to think like it's so insane but this is how you develop muscle memory and you see lines that like you normally don't I mean this was just like the peg clap right like I like this was um this was an Iron Man in the Coliseum. Shout out to the Coliseum. Nesh can send you the Discord link to the Coliseum, but it's where you play money matches. But in an Iron Man, usually, um, I think the general consensus is you can take a you can take a while to think. Um, I think this was like a hundred dollar money match. Um, or Iron Man. So we send Omega, and uh, we send Purgatrio. Um, there. Why? Why did? Why was it? Why was it Omega? There was a reason. Um, that has to be a reason. Uh, yeah, thank you for the show in Jeremiah. But, anyways, so the other thing was, yo, do you commit the Fleur de Lee to deal the damage? Um, and you put him on a clock, or you hold it. That was a that was a contentious debate, as well. So, so that was the other thing. We decided that we put him on a clock. We attack with both and put him at three k, and. And then basically he's dead next turn. That was basically the thought process of not using Flutely as a negate. Um, so we attack, we attack. He takes 5k. And then we go main phase 2 pass. He draws Tsuchinoko. And in my head, in my head, I'm like, I'm still vibing. You know, I'm like, I have, bro, I have TCV punishment. So now I'm like, I can punishment freely. Um, what I mean by that is I can freely use punishment because he's on he's on a clock. So this is why I went for this. Basically, we gave up a negate to put him on a clock because we have we have punishment Tisibu. Um But yeah. Yeah, no, we thought about that too. We thought about Omega putting back Winda, but there was an issue with that. We didn't have another Shadal monster in the graveyard. Trust me, yeah. Uh, Death the Striker. We were thinking. I I was thinking we were thinking about that play too. But the the reason why you go for this line is because um, you put him on a clock, so you can use your t punishment, and the va the punishment value was a lot better if you use Flutely as a uh, to put lethal, like put him closer to death. And oh yeah, I did I did go P guys VRBP. <laughs> ja, 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 ja. Piss gang. Um, who's we? Uh, it was an Iron Man. So it was like me. It was me, Hani, and I think Arnold. But Arnold wasn't basically. I was basically playing for Arnold, low key. <laughs> but yeah. So he dark ruled me, bro. In my head, I'm like, okay, I'm so glad. You can't summon Winder after using Maximus. Okay, a uh, hex you totally just joined. 
I could, I definitely could tell you just joined this uh, stream, and then you just type that. But bro, we summoned Winda before Maximus effect. <laughs> don't worry, bro. No, trust me. I trust me. Don't worry, bro. <laughs> we're good. We're good. Anyways, when the dude dark ruled me, I, I was like, okay, I'm so glad I played. I I played around droplets slash dark ruler and got value out of my schism. Um. Are you running Prosperities or Desires with Small World? Also, sub. Always love the in-depth analysis. Anytime, bro. Like, let, let me know if you guys are enjoying this. Because, like I said, I think this is, like, really good. Like, I find this to be very good value. Especially if you're trying to play competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. Because um, this is literally, like, the thought. This is, like, literally, like, what's going through my brain as we're playing this. Like, literally, like, what's going through. But, uh, anyways, he, he Dark Rulers me. Um, and I'm like, okay. Not gonna cap. Dark Ruler's pretty good, but if I TC boo him, I give up Maximus, I give up Winda, I have a Flood Elite, and I Punishment, Pop 2, and he has TC, he's under TC boo. This game is over in my head. I'm like, whatever. Dark Ruler, these nuts. I know uh, boost in his hand. I don't mind. Now, on the Summit of Torn Scales, I had to think. I knew he had boots. I knew he had boots. So I'm like, okay. This boost doesn't start a chain, guys. It just summons itself. He just like literally goes boop, 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 and just slaps himself on the board. So, if I, so, you might be wondering why don't you guys let him summon boots and then activate TC boot? But then here's an issue: I don't want to let him put boots in the graveyard so he can search off the boots. I don't, I don't want him to search Foglade. Why? Because if I let him search Foglade, that means I, I might not have, I might not have lethal next turn. I might not have lethal, and if I pop Foglade, he can reborn a card and then block an attack. So I'm like, okay. I, I cannot let I cannot TC boot on res because I put boots in the grave, boots search fog. He fogs one of my he fogs my Maximus or something. If I try to out it, if I try to go punishment, if I if I go okay, if I go like uh, he can also fog his monster. Yeah, it will just like I'm like I can't let him get access to fog. Fog might prolong the game. He might come back. There's a scenario. I'm like okay, I can't risk it. So, but. I, for some reason, I, I went, I let him, I let, I did let him summon it. I did let him summon it. I did. Now, I'll be honest. I don't even, I like, I'm trying to like rethink of why I did this. I'm trying to rethink of why I did this. And I think in my head, I think in my head, because he already committed to Dark Ruler, if he sends us to the Grievar search boots, even if he has boots, and he boots, he still cannot win the game because he can't out the window. Because he could also, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it was discard boots for the fact. Yeah, that was it was. Good job. Because he can just use the effects of Torn. Yo. Lakuti? No, Lakuti in the chat. Yo, you get an A plus for that. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. The, the Torn, the boost goes to the graveyard anyways because of Torn. Yeah, that's exactly it. That was what I was forgetting. That was the thing that I was forgetting. That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. That's why uh, we didn't just flip it right away. Yo, A+. Plus, easy clap. Now we TC boo. Uh, send the Maximus. Send the send the window. Um, and he sends it. Then he goes Torn Scales effect. Send Tsuchinoko. And I was sick, bro. I was freaking sick of mode, bro. I'm like, this dude has Tsuchinoko, bro. But in my head, I'm like, so what? Because the, he can't make break sword, he levered already. Um, if he even makes Tribony, what is he gonna send? Um, so it just doesn't. I didn't. I don't play gravity controller. Yeah, I don't play gravity controller. So he goes send cloak off of scales. He goes snake effect summon, and then I think I think here again because you, know, you gotta understand, bro. Like um, everything that he does. Gives me a little bit more information about the rest of his lines. Like, what, what are the options available to him? He has one card in hand at this point. Um, you know, I could Punishment pop both. If I Punishment pop both, uh, it's kind of neg. Because then he can go boost, set Fog, and he fogs my, um, he fogs my Ecclesi full delete, and I can't kill him. Um, so, then here's the other option, right? If he makes Tribony, Tribony has an effect to protect itself by sending any card on the field to the graveyard. So, if he makes Tribony... He needs to have a card on the field um, to protect itself. So if this guy goes set shade, 
I think he's going to... I think he's, I, I told him to continue because I wanted more value out of punishment at this point. So he sets... Okay, he sets shade. And at this point, I... Uh, before he activate even boots, boots is still in the grave. I'm like, okay, if this guy makes Tribony, and I go, I go punishment pop Tribony. He protects it. I send in Tis. I can pop it again. So it doesn't really matter. Um, he needs multiple. He needs two sets to play around uh, punishment on the Tribony. But even then, he's under TC boo. What can he Tribony that gets him good value? Um, so in my head, I was still vibing, still vibing. Then he searches Fog Blade. Then I have to think again. Um, because then I'm like, okay. If he makes if he sets Fog Blade and he makes Tribony, and I pop this, he can protect with he can protect with fog and shade. Um, but then he loses fog and shade, and that's still pretty lit. Because if he doesn't fog my monster, then I can kill him. Um and I think Tribony is 500 attack. I could be wrong. So I think on here. And I said, that's fine, because I need, in my head, in my head, I wanted to punishment, send in Tiss, and pop the Fog Blade. I, I'm, I'm almost positive that's why I held my punishment so long, because I want to get rid of the Fog Blade. I actually thought this Shade Brigadine was actually already a Fog Blade, too. I was actually, I was like, damn, that's going to suck either way, but at least I can confirm hit one of the Fogs. So he goes to Ribbony, and on here, I, oh, wait, because, okay. Okay, so you might be wondering, okay, yo, if I wanted to hit the Fog Blade, why didn't I just guarantee the Fog Blade? In my head, I was, I thought this was already Fog Blade. And I'd rather just do it here and not let him get value of sending level 3. Um, so, I was like, it's fine. Send in Tiss. And that's like, this is exactly what's going to happen. So, that's why I'm like, this was, then when he, when he like reveals the shade, I was like, oh, frick. I was sick of mode, bro. I'm like, god damn it. I was like, damn. Unfortunate. Oh, yeah, I Omega back, I think. What did I Omega back? Oh, Cloak. I Omega back the Cloak because Torn Skills, there's no, there's no, um, there's no PK card to be banished in the graveyard. So I just Omega the Cloak. <clears throat> oh, he could have chained it, right? And it's not the same card. Oh, yeah, he could have. Oh. I don't know if that was, oh, that could have been a good play, actually. I attack. I declared he's gonna fog blade me. Uh, funny thing, guys. Uh, if you fog blade a fluid elite that's been buffed, uh, it still retains the 500 attack from the turn prior because uh, I think modifiers that apply to more than just itself, um, even if that monster gets negated later, it's still it's still boofed. Yeah, it's still boofed. Um, maybe I explained that pretty poorly, but that's that's just how that works. Omega Law. Yeah, you're right. Okay, good. So that's why I didn't remove the counter. If you guys are probably wondering. What can Dash you get with the small world? Nothing. Nothing. You're insane. Oh, what's up, honey? Yo, what's good, honey? Pack said so. Got it. <laughs> I still remember with Giga Brilliant still boost even with Valor. That's pretty pog. Um, the guy draws Droll. He passes. I draw Droplets. Um, set. Pass. Draws Raigeki. He, he could Raigeki me and then put Fog in the graveyard. But then he can't do anything with that. So he just has to pass. And then I draw Ash. Okay, now this is where this is where boys are turned into men. I normal you saw the quickness of that normal summon Ash with quickness. You wanna know why? <laughs> Cause we're gonna make Anaconda. And I do not care if this fog blade goes to the graveyard, bro. Oh god, yes. I'm like, yo, run it, baby. It resolves. Does it resolve? Yo, let's go! And so that's basically what happened. We normal summon Ash with the quickness. And uh, it's 2,500 plus Anaconda. Exact, exact the Mundo game. Oh, how did game three happen? Let's let's see game three too. But yeah, I, I hope you guys like, like that game two had so much. We learned so much that game two. That game two was just like chock full of just like good stuff. Um... And then this game was... Oh, this game was just double e tell lead. And I think I asked Rusty and I was lit. <laughs> Dude, okay. Oh, my God. Okay, this was actually OD too. Yo, so a lot of people probably think this... Uh, like, oh, this is like pretty Omega Law. Like, oh, it's so easy. You just like... You just nib. Like, you Ash, you just vibe. If you were wasting the punishment on your disruption, you were actually losing there? Yeah, for sure, Nash. Yeah. No, like, that's the thing. You, if, bro, like, you have to play as correct as possible because... 
you have to play as correct as possible because yo it's Yu-Gi-Oh yo guys it's Yu-Gi-Oh bro people rip into like wild ass cards they like you probably think like if you th if you say better have it they freaking got it bro they freaking got it bro <laughs> yo you can show one replay with Nash where like literally the dude was on no cards the dude was on no cards and we're like we're like yo the only way you die here is if he draws Ray and the dude drew Ray <laughs> And we're like, better fucking have it, bro. No cards. Yeah, the dude drew wrong. Anyways, guys. Okay, so um, he he did Tribuny with um, he did Tribuny uh, with uh, with no with, with no normal summon. Yeah, he area zeroed into Ray, right? Yeah, it was so sick. Anyway, so um, he doubled E Telly into Tribuny. Uh, Tribuny send Graph, pretty standard Graphs here. Uh, so where where the thinking, a lot of the thinking comes in is. Um, it's gonna be this right here. If if you small world dasher reveal aster add ash, Lakuti, there's a huge issue with that. So you banish your dasher. So what does Anaconda do when the dasher is banished? So that's why we didn't do that. But that was an option too. We thought about Lakuti. You understand? I'm I'm I'm, I'm talking to you guys about all these plays that seem really good. But there's also a lot of really bad plays that we talk about in like when we when we walk through these replays. There's a lot of bad plays. Trust me. Oh my god, we heard some crazy plays, bro. Honey was popping off because people were saying some stupid ass plays, bro. <laughs> but that's how you learn. That's how you learn. But don't get me wrong, bro. There were some stupid plays we were talking about. Like, 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 for example, the, the play you mentioned, Lakuti, like obviously, no offense to you. Like, it's not like, but the play you mentioned, it's terrible. It in hindsight, it seems insane because you just normal the ash, make an anaconda, and you send fusion destiny. And and literally, literally, someone suggested that and we're like, bro. Send Fusion Destiny, eh? Where's your dasher at, huh? Where's your dasher at? You play, you play Mali? Like, you're all, yeah, you just roast each other. But like, you know, yeah, it's literally like, yo, you know, like, you know, like it, that's one of the things. But we, we actually, we talked about it too. Like, we talked about it too. Like, we talked about all the, like, trust me, there's a lot of really bad plays that get suggested. A lot of really bad plays that get suggested. You only hear about the good stuff. Trust me, <laughs> you. You should hear some of the stuff that like people are saying in the Discord calls telling us to do. <laughs> Anyways, the the point where you have to, we have to think a lot is so obviously the seer brings back Tribuny. Here's where it here where here's where like the you have to put your thinking caps on. So okay, what do you do here? If a lot of people I think would instinctively drop the nib down with quickness. I think a lot of people would drop the nib down with quickness. But there's a couple issues that we were thinking of. If the, the guy is not committed to his normal, he might still have a Torn Scales. And Torn Scales can dumb Fog Blade or Wings, which can reborn back the Rusty and use Rusty effect. Uh, he can convert the token into a uh, token into a, uh, a Link Spider and then still make Anaconda with the PK. Like, bro, here, I'll tell you, yo, I'll tell you the exact line here. You guys want to know why if you nib here, it's actually like awful. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you the line right now. You nib here, have a token. Imagine there's an imaginary token here. He goes normal torn, dump anything, send, send boots, add cloak. No, wait. Send boots, add cloak special. Make the link one. Wait, wait. Make, make, make link spider. He can also make anaconda straight right off the bat there. Like, and then Ash doesn't interact with anaconda. So, we wanted to use the nib for the anaconda. Um, There was, like, also another option where he went, like, he have a nib token here. Hold on, you have a nib token there. You normal torn scales. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Here, here, here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. So like, okay, you nib. I, I'm trying to think about the line. I'm, I'm trying to think about the line. But if you went like nib token here, normal torn, torn send any card. It, it can be anything. We're assuming he doesn't have a good pitch. Send cloak, add boots, special boots. Uh, special boots make anaconda banish boots trigger torn scales. Bring it back. Add. Uh, fog blade, um, add fog blade. Uh, turn. So okay, you guys hear this? Okay, here's the play. I got it, guys. Here's the play. Here's why you don't ask here. Here's why you don't ask here. I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. Okay, I figured it out. Sorry guys, it took me a while, but I figured it out. Okay, 
You nib, here's a token. Remember more torn scale? Torn scale pitch anything, literally anything. Could literally be anything. Send cloak, add boots, special boots. So now there's a torn scales, a torn scales, a token, a boots. You use you use torn scales and boots into anaconda right here. There's anaconda. You make this a link spider. You banish boots, add fog blade. Trigger torn scales, bring yourself back. Use torn scales, get banished. Link it with the link spider to make Dagda. You make Dagda. Anaconda, send fusion destiny, trigger Dagda, set scythe. You have DPE, ants, you have DPE, scythe, fog blade. Through nib right here with one torn scales. With one torn scales. So, so in our head, what we did was we ashed the Rusty and we held the nib for his extender. So, that's what we did. So he's like, I'm like, continue. I don't nib here because that line right there. So that's why. That's why I'm like, it's very important to know how like to play your opponent's deck, just as well as they do, right? Because if, if you don't know that was possible, that line of play was even possible, you would just shock a nib here and be like, YOLO. But because like, yeah, yeah, you can also do the, you can also do the Levier play, right? Levier, uh, make Anaconda. Wait, can you even make Levier? Anaconda. Wait, how do you even make Levier? How do you, how do you do Levier? You don't have anything banished. I don't think you can do Levier. I don't think you can do Levier. Torn boots into Levier, but then what do you have banished? This is before you banish boots. Oh, boots. Oh, boots. Yeah, your boots. Yeah, boots. Yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Boots. Yeah, you can also do. You can also do Levier to get follow up. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. You can also do Levier. You guys are right. Yeah, you are. You're right. Sorry, sorry, chat. You're absolutely right. Yeah, you can also go Levier, but the, the thought process is there. The thought process is there, right? Let's say hypothetically, I don't even know my opponent's that well that he can even make Levier. But the fact that I can understand that he had these lines of plays that can do that already in my head signal that like, I'm like, oh, this Napier is god awful. One Torn Scales, there's four in the deck. Cooks me instantaneously. Um, So, can Napier. But we Ash Rusty. So because Ash doesn't interact with Anaconda or Dagda, but it interacts with Rusty really well. I can hold the nib for the normal summon of Torn Scales. If he normals Torn Scales, bro, this nib is coming down so fast. So freaking fast, bro. And there's like almost no way he can extend out of that. There's almost no way on the normal summon of Torn Scales. Because, you know, I we like I said, we made we read the um we read the we read the torn scales. You know, if if I'm making the assumption. That this guy has a torn scales, then I play assuming he has torn scales, obviously, right? Like, like I said, you know, we if you make that educated guess that like he has that card, then you play around those cards. Um, so he sets IO, he sets wings, he sets fog, and in my head, I'm like, oh my god, he doesn't have it, he doesn't fucking have it. And now we have to nip here, right? Because now he's gonna go to end phase, he, he runs end phase, he runs. Freaking hits end turn right away. Doesn't even click end phase. Just... So now we're like, okay. Do we nib? Obviously, at this point, we felt kind of bad, right? We felt kind of... We were like, frick. You know, we played we played under the assumption he had it. And this is one of those scenarios that's important to understand. That, like, you know, sometimes your opponent doesn't have it. But you get punished so badly if he did. Because the idea is he hasn't normal summoned yet. Yeah, if the dude set Rota, this guy is 5 head. If he set Rota and we nib here... And then he flips up Rota. This dude is literally the biggest brain ever. That would be a crazy outplay. I would love to see that at like a YCS top cut feature match. That would be the biggest big brain play of like ever. But the thing is, it can't be Rota because he set three. He doesn't have a discard for Torn Scales. So he would have to like set two and keep a card in hand. But he set three, so there was no way Rota was ever a question. There is no way Rota was ever a question. Because Torn Scales by itself without a discard doesn't do the same doesn't do the play that I told you about. Alright. 
But now we have to think. I, I kind of have to nib here. You have to kind of nib here because in our head, in my head, I'm like, okay, there's a fog blade for sure. If I nib here and I normal owl star, I'll leave the star. Okay, so, okay, so backtrack a little bit. You now have to think a little bit more about, okay, why do you nib, right? Like, you know, hand, hand traps with purpose. That should be a new slogan, hand, hand trap with purpose. So, like, why would you nip here? The reason is because if we read that one of the fog blade is obviously going to be Ali the Star, what we would have, what would happen is if we if we go normal summon Alistair, it gets fog blade. There's not a lot of ways we extend from there. Like, there's an there there's an opportunity where we chain droplet, send the Alistair. So if we fog blade it, it still resolves and we get to add an invocation. Um, but if we do do that, there's no light monsters. So even if you go normal summon Alistair, chain fog blade, target this, chain droplet, send Alistair. You don't have a light monster so um it's not that amazing if we nib him and we normal alley the star and it gets imp it gets it gets uh fog blade it gets fog blade then we can go for the the we can go normal summon let it get stopped and make anaconda and anaconda dp in this game type of game state where he doesn't really have a lot of like amazing plays is really good um as well no, drop us a token. No, I'm assuming I'm saying we don't nib. If you don't nib, if you don't nib, no, 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 Skyline, you're not understanding. If you don't nib, I'm saying like, what if you don't nib? Act, uh, search meltdown, get alley, normal alley, and you chain drop and negating Rusty or something, or negate Rust uh, Cheribidine. That's probably the better one to negate. I'm just saying like, what if you hold the nib and like try to do it on like when he tries to pop off next turn? But in my head, I'm like, if this guy has fog blade. And Ali the star is going to get negated. I kind of want to go for an Anaconda line and, and, and play on Anaconda. So that's exactly what's going to happen here. And trust me, don't, don't get me wrong. It feels bad here to nib. It feels bad here to nib when we could have just nibbed him from gener in general. Um, like, it feels bad here to, like, you know, it sucks that we ash this and now we have to nib this and we didn't get good value out of our nib. But at the same time, we I think that the line we did was the safest line that played around the most. If we got greedy on the a nib and the guy went for that freaking um the 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 play with torn scales, it could be really bad. Like really, really bad for us. So nib here, nib, because we're gonna use nib as an extender. I think we put it in attack mode because it's 26. Or why do we put it in defense? Oh, I think we put it into defense because uh you can make you can why do we put in his events i don't know there there has to be a good reason because usually like even the position of nib or like the position of nib actually matters probably i could be yeah it could be purgatrio there has to be a good reason for it I'm, i don't remember why but there was a reason why we put this in defense because it was only 26 attack draw for turn oh my god ecclesia that was like freaking mwah. god that was freaking insane bro that was freaking nice, bro. I was like, oh, yes. Because even the Anaconda line where you normal alley, alley the star and like they fog blade and you make Anaconda, even that line's a little sussy. It's a little sussy still. The Ecclesia though, oh yes, this is it. This is the Goo Goo Gaga. So we start off with Meltdown, obviously. The Olive Oil, he IOs us. And then at this point, uh, I'm like, we're, no, oh my god, I caught IO. Dude, I caught IO. I actually caught IO. Wait, when, like, I caught IO. Look, I'm like, I'm like, I activated Meltdown. I'm like, he has IO. He's like, think, activate IO. Freaking caught it, bro, with quickness. With quickness, bro. I'm like, IO, bro. Read him like a book. So, that's why the Ecclesia, no, that's why we were so excited that we drew Ecclesia. That's why we were so excited with you Ecclesia because normal summoning Ash in this game state is dog water. It is dog water. So we're like, okay, we're gonna normal Ecclesia. How did this happen? I normal Ecclesia use effect, and I think he fog blades this. And that was our goal. We wanted this to get fog blade. But he might not fog blade this because he knows if he does, we can make Anaconda. But he doesn't, so we search punishment. And then I think that's fine. You you attack into this, and then you attack for 3,000. He's on 5. He still can't beat punishment. We're still lit. We're still lit. But we normal to use effect um, to bait the fog, and we fog as we make Anaconda, and then he's in a very, like, dog position. Because we Anaconda can, um, we can also, like, 
lock him under his own IO. If he tries to fog blade, bring back uh, Rusty, we can like pop it with DPE and it gets banished. Like it's, you know, overall, it was just like really solid. So you attack this, and I think he's gonna wings it, bro. This guy literally about to wings his token. Um, I don't. Can you fog your own token? No, you can't. You can only negate. You can only target effect monsters. But he's gonna wings his own token. So this is actually like actually insane bro this guy wings his token and that was actually so good um because he puts wings in the graveyard to bring back rusty but because we search punishment we're still in a very good position where he can't just bring back rusty like freely you know so it was fine um so i think he damage steps it right does he damage steps it he's like so yeah he's thinking od yeah and i said no worries take your time right Yo, pack deck tech, ship it. Chill, chill. What's up, Cam? Um, so, you know, you know, we give each other courtesy, right? Yo, you guys got to play. Yo, guys, honestly, a big disclaimer, guys. Yo, when you when you guys play at locals or just play with uh, each other, yo, just, just show people respect, man. Like, dude, it goes such a long way. I think it's so, like, crazy I even have to say this. But just if you show people respect, bro, like... It, it, it's, it goes a long way, bro. There's no need to try to shark each other for like a couple of dollars, guys. It's really, there's just no point, you know? But anyways, you know, I told him TYT would just take your time. Do what you, whatever, you know? Yeah, it gets scammed, Cam. Um, he fog leads the Ecclesia and then we go nib attack this and he's going to wing protect it, bro. I was like, bro. <laughs> I was like, bro, this is insane. Oh, what's up, honey? Pack are saying, let's go. I'm like, bro, this guy is just so low value, but this is so lit. This is so lit for me. I'm like, yo, I can't. Oh, my God. This is so lit for me. Oh, my God. And if he does not have a way to play next turn, my Anaconda, my Anaconda don't. <laughs> no, I can't make Verte, guys. I can't. No, 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 no. That's not how that works. Ecclesia is already resolved. And if you, so because it's already resolved, I'm actually locked from the extra deck. You can't just like fall blade it later but the idea is that on the next turn he's in a dog he's in a very bad position and uh but the here's one issue though this place actually this guys you gotta understand this you guys think this play was dog but this guy actually played out of his mind this guy actually played out of his mind the wings on the nib token puts that 30 100 and that that attack gain is permanent which means he can actually clear the nib next turn you guys are making fun of him, but he actually played out of his mind. This guy was actually playing out of his mind. Like, by making this 3100, he we actually are not in position to make Anaconda next turn. Um, and this token, like, this token is still, like, here. So, like, this is actually a very solid play from him. Like, it was the only way in which, like, he was still in somewhat of a position to stay, like, in the game. So, we already know. Set punishment, set droplets. Because... There is a world where you send in Tiss, pop order. So we actually had a couple of outs to order. Because a lot of you guys are probably like, yo, he drew order, guys. He drew order, yo. He drew order. He drew order. We lost. We lost. We drew, he drew order. We lost. All you guys would get tilted right here. You guys, your mental state would be so broken. Like, you, he, this guy flips order and you, you like, want to scoop the game. And that, it's not that simple. Because punishment is an in Tiss, which is an out to this. Anaconda is an out to the IO. There's... There's still ways to still play the game under IO. And so I think Hani mentioned it. The, the Dogmatica cards are very powerful here. Um, so. Draws into another Fog Blade. I'm like, okay. Okay, this guy's insane. Honestly, I did not read this. I'm not going to cap. I did not read this. the freaking top deck Fog, fog Blade. But <clears throat> here's, he, can't, he, can't, he can't wings back Rusty. It makes no sense. He loses punishment really badly. And even though it's at 2600, um, it, it would like it would actually even though it's at 2600, you can just send Omega. But honestly, though, the more I watch this game over, he could have done something insane. Oh, wait, could he? Because the way I don't know if there was a way, but I know there was no way to do it. But there was if there was a way, he can put this fog blade in the graveyard. He can fog blade back the rusty. And then when you try to punishment the Rusty, you can chain wings to make it 3100 so that we can't send anything from the extract to actually destroy it. That was something that I was seeing in my head. But these are kind of like trying to things that I'm trying to like think of, like for ways for him to outplay us. Right? That, that's a really insane outplay, by the way. Because I don't think I have anything over 3100 in my extra deck. 
or at 31. But, and then he can then use Rusty. But, um, it also, like, Wings would also technically would have protected Rusty as well from destruction. So, it was just, like, way, like, it was just pretty good overall. But you don't get to send anything from the extra deck. Like, you wouldn't be able to send anything from the extra deck. And that is actually, actually, can you? No, you can't. Because you don't have anything um, at the, um, with equal attack. <clears throat> Token to attack, beat over Nib. No, if you Fogblade the Nib, you can't attack into Nib. You can't attack Nib. Guys, don't forget, Fogblade makes it so that monster cannot be targeted for attacks. Um, so it's not just that you can't attack with the monster, it can't. It also can't be... Um, that's why I'm like, it, I don't see the line where he puts Fogblade in the grave to bring back Rusty and then wings the Rusty. Um, but I'm saying, hypothetically, if there was a line where he could have done that, oh my god, he would have outplayed us like crazy. But anyways... This is at 31. The gain is permanent. He's going to attack over the nib. We're going to take 100. Uh, it takes a 700. Um, I think that damage actually is relevant later. Um, big tip, guys. Don't forget IO. You can target the monster attack. And after attack rage, you fog blade the monster attack. Just fog the graveyard. Yo! Yo, this is why Nesh is insane. Wow. Yeah, that's so that's how you do it. Yeah, I, I'm not really that like I know how to like I know how to play the PK deck, but I'm not as experienced, so I didn't see that line that Nesh is mentioning. But that's actually a very good point. Yeah, but this is like the benefit of playing with like all these different decks. Like you learn these type of things that are important. Actually, that would put fog in the graveyard. That's actually insane. And then that would be able to do the fog summon back Cheribony and then wings it, and that protects him from punishment, which would be like we would probably lose the game to be quite honest. Um, but we still have an Ash Blossom, so if he somehow does do it, like, we can still Ash him. So, it's, honestly, it wasn't the worst, but still. He tagged him there, we take the 100. Uh, I'm just gonna go here. We draw on a Deer Servant. Obviously, he has IO. So, uh, uh, like, we can't really do anything here, but we do know that Punishment needs to out the order so we can a Deer Servant. Punishment now is focused on outing order. So, that's the game plan. He can't attack into Ecclesia because of Fog Pog Blade. So, we're just gonna vibe. We just pass here. Take 700. Pass. I'm pretty sure I just fight it. I don't even think I should. Do I set this? I'm trying to think. I don't think I do. I turn it to defense. Yeah, I don't set it. Yeah, he drew into the cloak, um, which is not bad. Um, but if he normals the cloak, if he normals cloak, then we can pop the IO. Um, so he takes 700 again. Let's see what he does here, though. Because because the thing is, we're playing very reactive right now. Like, the way, like, our, like our game plan is very reactive. Like, I have to see what he does and then determine what's the next course of action. There's nothing preemptively, there's nothing pre, there's nothing that I can do preemptively. So, that's something to keep in mind, right? Like, I, like, because sometimes people, like, say, think in semi-phase and they, like, legit have nothing. Um, if you guys are on a time crunch, that's something you just be, like, just go to main, you know, just tell your opponent to go to main phase. Because, like, when you're playing a very reactive deck like this, like, you're waiting for them. Um, so, let's see what happens here. He goes wings on the, on the, the, um, the rusty. Yo, okay, this was actually a tough decision because, like, the thing, you gotta understand, when the guy does something like this, when the guy does something like, yo, slumming back Rusty, I, like, you have to think about, okay, what can he have? The guy didn't do it last turn, so what did he draw or set that makes it, like, that makes it actually good right now? Because he didn't do it last turn. He had the option to, but he didn't. So this is, like, this is a huge predicament. Because it's like, damn, do you punishment this right away? Like, you just raw dog the punishment? Um, you know, or do you let him rock on the Rusty and you Ash it? But then, but then Nadir Servant right here is a win condition. In this type of game state, it's a win con. Um, so, there's a world where we let Rusty rock and we Ash it, and then we pop the normal summon, and then we intis the IO. I'll, I'll be honest, I don't remember exactly what we did. Okay, so we did this here, which honestly, like, I'm not even sure if this was right because he had to have something else. Wait, that was definitely not allowed. Whoa. Oh, that was allowed. Yeah. Oh, Rusty was 21. Sorry. For some reason, I kept, I think I kept thinking Rusty was 26. But yeah, punishment sent in Tiss out the order. And then this gets banished. I think, I think we corrected that. Yeah. yeah. And then in Tiss pops IO because oh, Nadir Servant was the win condition. That's why. Oh, oops, sorry. The guy made a uh, Link Spider here. Normal Cloak. And I think he's going to go into Anaconda, right? Anaconda. Send. Fusion Destiny. Droplets. Uh, yeah, now we now Droplets is live, so we can negate the Anaconda. 
Because when you intis the IO, now Droplets is live. And that's exactly what happened. Yep. So now we're actually in a very good spot here. Anaconda got negated. We got value by sending Meltdown. Uh, we didn't have to send Ecclesia, so he, he can't just uh, get Foglet value. Very lit right now. Very lit. And I think he's going to activate Cloak. And the Ash is going to come down with Swiftness. Super speed. Right? Oh, wait. Why didn't we? Wait, what? No, no, no. Oh, oh, oh okay. You guys want to know why this Cloak didn't get Ash? You want to know why this Cloak didn't get Ash? There's actually a big reason. You know what we thought this set was? We thought this set was Fusion Destiny. We thought this set was Fusion Destiny because he was under his own IO and he set a card and pass. So we're like, this might be Fusion Destiny. If we Ash Cloak and he Fusion Destiny us, we lose the game. So we're like, yo, we have to play around this being a set Fusion Destiny because he said it last turn um, when he had IO. So that's why. That's why we didn't, that's why we didn't Ash the Cloak. Obviously, I would have Ash Cloak with Quickness if I knew that this wasn't a Pogblade. If I knew this was a Pogblade, but at the at the moment, the thought process in our head was that like he had IO, he, he had Fog Blade, he went, he went, um, he went Wing Summon Rusty on the turn after, after he set this. Um, this is Iron Man, yes, yeah, an Iron Man. So I'm like, yo, this is Set Fusion Destiny. Why would he set the fusion destiny though instead of keeping it at hand? I don't know. Like there was an there was an argument. Maybe he tried to bluff it because um, maybe he tried to bluff it. Um, like the car was never gonna be live ever again, anyways. Because you gotta think about it. Like you know, how do I out his IO? Like maybe like I don't try to prioritize his IO. Maybe I hit like the other one. He can bluff a pog blade. Like you know, like there's a lot of things that like I don't know what's going through his head to be honest. But I thought the guy just said something just to bluff again. But like I said. We didn't think it was another fog blade because he already had it in his starting hand. So what are the odds of him drawing to a second one? Because if he's playing the wings package, the the conclusion we made was that he's only playing two fog blade, one wings. That was also another assumption we made about his deck list. Um. So because we saw we saw fog, we saw we saw fog and boots in the starting hand. No fog and wing in the starting hand. So we're like, yo. There's no way that's another pog blade. It's probably set fusion destiny. So we have to we have to go through it. Can you go to the rosters of elimination for what's in hand? Like Euron is probably not torn hands. It's no more trying to be so much uh, value into punishments and wings would still be in the graveyard. Um. Oh, like. Can you like you probably know it's not torn hands. It's no more torn would be so much value into punishments since wings would still be in the graveyard. Yeah, exactly. No, I think like it it couldn't be torn skills because the torn skills almost someone with cheeks, and like there wasn't. Like, honestly, the only thing that I was afraid of was a normal summon um, tour guy. But we have Ash Blossom for it. Like, so, like, I was, like, still vibing because, like, Punishment answers the IO, which makes drop it live. So, he still had to, like, beat these two before we even commit to the Ash. So, there's literally nothing he could have had in his hand except a monster. I think we actually predicted tour guide or cloak. Yeah, Nash, that's what we were afraid of. We were afraid of tour guide. That's why we popped the IO and then had the droplets live to negate... Um, the torn, the, the, the torn, I'm sorry, the tour guide. Cause you, you want to drop with the tour guide and then use the ash on the, on the fusion destiny. That's probably set or something. Anyways, the guy passes and oh my God, bro. We drew into freaking Maximus. Now, now this is where, this is where it's going to get lady, 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 lady McGritty. Yo, this is going to be insane. Insane. So a couple options. Do you start Maximus or you start Nadir? And the question is, I think we only play one in Tis, so we had to go Nadir send Omega. Right? I think was it Nadir send Omega? I'm trying to remember what it was. It was like, oh my god, I don't remember the exact play, but there was a there was a certain order we had to do it. I think it was Nadir first for sure. It was definitely Nadir first. But what did we send? Was it Omega? Yeah, it was Omega. Oh, okay. You guys want to know why you sent Omega? Because you get to Omega twice. So what we did was we're going to go Omega. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. I know now. I'm going to Omega his fault out here. I remember now. Okay, you add Ecclesia. And then you use Ecclesia effect special. Add. Um, it's going to get Fog Blade. Okay, lit. We're going to summon the Maximus. Okay. And then we use Maximus. Wait, why didn't we use Omega? There has to be a reason. 
Oh, maybe that was another game. I think there was another replay where we double Omega someone to go for game. Anyways, we go Maximus Effect, and now we get value on um, App Cologne and Titanoclad. So this is just Schism. So he can't, he literally cannot beat Schism in this thing, game state, by the way, guys. It's basically just Schism. And this is just like a game, like basically a winning position. App Cologne, at Schism, we pitch the Ash. And then I think it's just Maximus Attack Anaconda. Um, and we have to clear the Anaconda because he, so he can't use it next turn. Because he has turn play, he has main phase one, he has priority to do the first action. So Schism wouldn't answer the Anaconda, and Ash doesn't answer Anaconda. So that's why, that's why Maximus was in attack after this got Fogbladed. Set that, and we just win here, I'm pretty sure. Titanoclad gets Flit Ali, um, and it's just Schism. He just has no way to win. Okay. He goes, he, yeah, he said GG. Yeah. So, pretty good. I thought there was like some line where we like doubled a mega or something, but yeah, it did make sense that he had nothing. But yeah, that that was the game. It was an insane. Yeah, this game was intense, guys.